Hey guys, my name is Ace Ready and welcome to the next module. In this module, I'm going to be talking to you guys about how to choose the right target audience. Because in this business, everyone talks to you about the technical aspects of advertising on Facebook, but no one actually tells you who to target and what to do, right? And do not, don't worry guys, this isn't going to be one of those uh, ideal customer avatar uh, worksheets, okay? Like I'm not going to make you do ideal customer stuff. That's just some bullshit that these gurus make you do, honestly, just so you waste a bunch of time. Like, I'm not going to ask you to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys the four different types of target markets that exist in each industry and how you can advertise to them. Okay, so let's get started. So this is a very important part of building a successful e-commerce or any business online. Okay. But with the right understanding of the target audience, you'll be able to gear your advertising towards attracting them into your sales process 10 times easier. There's four primary types of target audiences. Okay, that's it, just four. Target audience number one, people that do not use a product similar to what you're promoting, but they actually want to. Okay, so this is a specific audience. Target audience number two, people that do not, people that currently use a product similar to the one that you're promoting. Okay, and we'll get to examples in a second here so you'll understand it better. Target audience number three, people that are in the niche but aren't actively looking to buy a product, you know. Target audience number four, people that aren't even in the niche. Okay, and that's just four types of target markets. Now, if it's a bit confusing to you, I understand. So let's go, uh, let's go to the examples, right? For example, now I'm going to be giving you guys two different examples here. I'm going to be giving an example of health supplements and I'm also going to give you guys an example of this Viking mug because these are two different types of products. A health supplement is a health product and it's generally a bit harder to advertise, right? But like a Viking mug is easier. It's more of a drop shipping product that we used uh, to make a lot of money with. We probably made $143,000 just selling this mug, okay? now. Another thing I got to tell you guys before we move further is that some of the ads and the claims that we, I'm going to show you guys, don't, don't take that and use the exact same ads in your advertising. They're all for example purposes. Okay, that's number one. Number two, um, as far as supplements go, I know some of you guys are like, oh, you know, supplements do not make you healthier. Uh, fact is, I don't care. Like, I don't really take any supplements. I have no idea. This is just for example purposes. Health supplements are usually harder to sell. Okay, and that's why I wanted to give you guys an example of that because there are, there's a bit of a complication involved when it comes to health supplements. Uh, you can use the same system to sell about anything from digital courses, consulting services, literally anything. Okay, uh, the third thing I want to tell you guys is when you're using any of the advertising systems that I'm going to give you, make sure that you're co compliant with your government. Okay, so I don't know what country you live in, but make sure that um, your advertising is compliant with the laws of that specific country because if like if you, if you if you do any advertising that's not um allowed you could get into trouble okay so and i'm not i'm not I'm, i do not take any responsibility for it we do not take any responsibility for it over here you know in in the ultimate acad ultimate facebook advertising academy so anyway so now since that is out there now let me give you the example so if you're selling health supplements right your target audience number one is going to be people that are looking to buy supplements. Okay, so, and we're gonna get deeper into that in a second here. Your target audience number two is going to be people that are already using supplements that, you know, and that's it. Like they're, they're already using supplements. They are not looking for anything. Target audience number three, these are people that are wanting to be healthier, okay, but do not use any supplements currently. They wanna be healthier, but they do not use any supplements. People, target audience number four, people that do not care much about being healthy and aren't using any supplements. They don't really know, like they're not paying attention to getting healthier, okay? That's not their goal. So let me give you a second example. So if you're selling the Viking mug, right? Here's the four different target markets on the Viking mug. And I want you guys to do this too, okay? So like like after this module, right? Like take, take whatever it is you're selling, okay? What I'll probably do is I'll give you guys a worksheet that you can download and uh, you can practically use to like write exactly what the target audiences are. So in this case, for example, in a Viking, if I was sitting in a Viking mug, um, target audience number one is going to be people that love Game of Thrones or God of War or anything that has to do with Vikings or mythological um, stuff or even Avengers. So 
So people that love these movies or these shows or whatever and are looking to buy a Viking mug fall under target audience one, okay? Target audience two, people that love these uh, fictional or non-fictional stuff that already have a cool accessory. So for example, in this case, it could be people that love Game of Thrones that ha already have a cool Game of Thrones accessory. You know, that's as simple as it is. Target audience number three, people that watch Game of Thrones that never really bought anything. Like they, they never any really bought any merchandise or bought any cool accessories or anything like that. Okay, so these guys, and they do not, they do not intend to either. Okay, and we'll get deeper into this in a second here. Target audience number four, these people do not care about Game of Thrones. Okay, they do not care. Now, the sales process is different for every segment of the audience. And that's what I'm going to show you guys here. And understanding the audience is more powerful than anything else. Okay, you can really understand the algorithm of Facebook and you can know the technical aspects very well, but you won't really be able to build anything sustainable without a perfectly clear understanding of the audience and its needs. Okay, now let me give you guys a quick story here. Um, a few months ago, I met this friend called Carl. Okay, and Carl was this, he was, he was a rock star at one point, you know, both of us have long hair. Uh, he was a rock star at one point and he became an internet marketer and he, he killed it with one part of e-commerce, which is organic e-commerce uh, stuff where you could make money without, you know, necessarily running any ads. So it's more of free advertising. So I was talking to the guy, right? And we were talking and, um, you know, like, like I've seen many Facebook advertising gurus, like there's a lot of gurus, like they're like, oh, you know, we run a lot of money, we spend a lot of money on Facebook ads. And now. I know a lot of people, right, that have a lot of expertise when it comes to Facebook ads, like they literally know how the platform works. They have a very deep understanding of the algorithm as well, okay? But they do not make any money. They can't sell anything on Facebook. But Carl comes in and Carl doesn't have, he doesn't even have a lot of uh, experience per se. He just knows his audience extremely well, right? Because the dropshipping community at this point was sick of running Facebook ads and other forms of advertising. So he knew his audience and he went in and wrote an ad. You know, I'm not, I'm not even joking, guys. He had like four ads because he added me to his account because I wanted to see what the heck he was doing. He had four ads and he probably had one retargeting campaign. Four ads, one retargeting campaign. That's it. And he paid $90,000 with it. And I was like, dude, what the hell? The only reason that happened is because he really understood his target market, you know? So when he crafted advertising and he spoke about how these guys could get traffic without spending money on ads, everyone was like, okay, we got to pay some attention to this. You know, and that's how important it is to understand the audience that, you know, you're selling to. Now, let's take a look at the sales process for target audience number one, okay? So target audience number one is people that, do not use a product similar to what you're promoting, but want to. So they're searching to buy a product that's similar to yours. So here's what we know about this product, okay? So let's take the example of supplements. Number one, we know that these people wanna be healthy. They're aware of the benefits of being healthy and they want to be healthier, right? Number two, they're aware of the benefits of using supplements to get healthier. They know that if they use supplements, they will get healthier, okay? Number three, they are trying to find the best supplement to buy. And these are the three things we know about, these, about, about this person, right? About this audience. Now, in order to sell to this target audience, okay, which is one, you need to convince them that you have the best supplement in the space and that's it because they already want to get healthier. They already know that they have to take supplements and they're just trying to find the best supplement to buy. So you just need the best supplement in the space and you need the best positioning for it. You need the best offer. Okay. How do you do that? Well, fairly simple. And we're going to go in depth into this in the next few modules, right? where especially the launch modules, I'm gonna be showing you guys exactly how to structure everything pretty much. So how do you do that? Fairly simple. Just have a solid sales funnel which highlights the major benefits, even puts up a comparison chart if necessary and pushes for an aggressive close. 
Okay, because these guys are looking at other supplements too. You need to capture them. Your job is to just tell them, hey, you know, like you want supplements, buy mine, get mine, get them into the ecosystem. Offer a great discount, you know, give it, give your supplements away for free. Just ask them to pay for shipping, you know, give them a bottle for free. Tell them, try it, try it out. If you want to pay for shipping, go for that too. Send them a supplement just to try it out, you know. Because when you do that, now you're pulling them into your ecosystem. Right? Next. You could also you could also do other stuff, by the way, and we'll get to different funnels and different sales processes that you can use in the next few modules. The advantage with this target audience is that you don't really have to do a lot of convincing or selling. You just need a solid offer and plug them to plug them into your ecosystem instead of your competitors. Right? The downsides to this audience are Number one, it's way too competitive, okay? Because everyone's, everyone's hitting this audience. Everyone's drilling this audience. So your USP needs to be really solid for this to convert. Your USP is a unique selling proposition. In the, in the later part of the core, you know, once you understand the fundamentals of Facebook, we'll start talking about fundamentals of offer creation, right? That's before the launch, uh, the launch formula. That's where I'll talk to you guys about the USP and, and all of these concepts and, uh, and I'll really explain it to you. So if you don't understand what a USP is, it just basically means that there's like what's distinctive about your product that your competitors don't offer, you know, and that's, that's it. So the downsides are way too competitive, right? So you need a strong USP, number one. Number two, it's expensive to advertise to this audience and takes a lot of skill. Because there's a lot of people doing it, it just takes a lot of skill to do it, okay? Um, so, like, to, to stand out and crush your competition. Now, the next is, this is an audience that is looking to buy a cool Viking mug, right? Now, this is the Viking mug example. Why do they want it? Probably just, they want, they probably just want to collect it, you know, probably because they want to, they want to gift it to someone, or because they're hosting a cool party and they want it at home you know, just to look cool. Now here's what we know about this audience. Number one, they watch Game of Thrones or they watch some other show that's similar. Could be Vikings or the Thor, you know, um, Avengers too, because it has Thor in it, anything. Number two, they want to show everyone that they're a fan. You know, they're a fan and they're not afraid of showing everyone that they're a fan because it's cool. Number three, they want to buy merchandise or accessories to do it. That's audience number one. So in this case, your marketing is going to be geared toward convincing them that your mug is the best thing that they can buy to showcase their love for Game of Thrones. Okay, and that's as simple as it is. Now here's a few stats of this audience. The desire is high, okay? Because they're actually looking for the product that you're selling. So the desire is high. Competition is high too. Because everyone's trying to go after the same guys. Reach is hard. Reach is basically like me trying to tell you guys how easy it is to reach this audience on Facebook ads or Google ads or anything like that. So the reach for this is going to be hard, okay? And the scale is going to be low because it's it, like you're looking for buyers here. You know, and buyers are always harder to reach. And uh, this, this, this segment only consists about 1% of the market or so. So, you know... So it's going to be harder to scale the scale the ads for this niche in, for this audience in comparison with some of the other uh, audiences that I'm going to show you. So let's let's go to the second one. The target audience too is people who currently use a product similar to the one that you're promoting. So again, supplement example. So what do we know about people when it comes to what do we know about target audience too? If you're selling supplements, number one, they want to be healthy. Okay, they're aware of the benefits of being healthy. Number two, they are aware of the benefits of using supplements to get healthier. Okay, number three, they already use supplements. Okay, now in order to sell to this audience, you need to convince them that your supplements are better than the ones that they're taking. Okay, because they, they have no intention to buy new supplements. They, they do not want to replace the supplements that they have. Okay. So the only way to sell to these guys is by either getting them to get rid of their supplements and taking yours or, or 
adding your product as an extra as a compliment like selling them a complimentary product how do you do that fairly simple you have to engineer a campaign showing them why their current supplements don't work and i'm, I'm going to give you guys an example here you got to find their motivations and sell your product as a better way to hit their goals okay and i'm going to show you guys exactly how to do that either that or you sell your product as an extra to what they're already using okay a cool example of how to do it is talk about how 90% of the supplements don't have a certain ingredient, which yours does, you know? So like your ad could basically say, hey, you know, 90% of the supplements don't have this, our supplement has this, and that is why you're gonna get results, and that is why you never got any results using the other supplement. You know, because you don't know what their deal is. So if you go in and you're like, hey, you know, like you won't really get any results with those supplements because they don't have a certain ingredient. Ours does, and you're gonna get sub you're gonna get results with ours. Like that's that's a good marketing hook. Okay, so let's say you're selling internet marketing coaching programs. You could like you could all you gotta do is take one concept, right, that no one else is teaching, and piggyback on that. So like talk about how that one concept, which is the most important that no one else is talking about is something that is going to make them a lot of money. And the only person that's talking about it is you. You know, and that's how we sell to audience number two. The advantage with this audience is you do not have to sell them on the idea of taking supplements. So they're already doing it. They already know that supplements are good for them and they're taking supplements. So that you don't have to convince them there, right? This segment allows you to scale your ha ads harder too because it's broader than target audience number one. There's obviously disadvantages too to this. The disadvantages are it's harder to do the comparisons and convince them that your product is better since it requires to be creative. Because, um, I mean, you need to pull out the ingredient. You need to do something to stand out, right? So it requires you to be creative. So that's one thing that's kind of hard about this audience. Number two, a majority of this audience isn't looking to get new supplements. So you have to give them a strong enough reason to move. Like you need to give them a reason that is um, solid, that is strong, you know, and that's a good motivation for them to move. So it's going to be quite um, different than just trying to sell to people that want to buy something, right? Number three, this is a pretty competitive niche too. Probably, probably not as much as the... Uh, other audience, the target audience won, but it's still competitive, you know, because now not just not just competitive with other people, but you're competing with the supplement that he's using. And that's what makes it harder. Right. Next, in this case, where you're selling your product as a separate or complementary to the one that they're using, you need to have a strong enough reason for them to buy the product where you just got to you just got to link the motivations. Okay, and if you guys don't know what to do and how, what that means, I'm going to show you guys in, in the next few slides how that works. Okay, so when we get to audience three is when I'm going to show you the life force. And I'm going to show you guys how to find out what the motivations of people are and how to advertise to it. Viking mug example. So let's talk about Viking mug. This is an audience that all has, like, has already bought cool merchandise from Game of Thrones, right? This could be just to collect it or probably because it's a gift or probably they wanted it at a party, whatever. We already spoke about that, right? So here's what we know about this audience. Number one, they watch Game of Thrones or any other shows like that, obviously. Number two, they want to show other people that they're a fan of the content by owning something cool. Number three, they already have something, right? That could be like a Viking mug or something else. They already have a product you know, to, to showcase their stuff. They probably have a t-shirt with Avengers on it. Now, in this case, your marketing is going to be geared toward convincing them that they need to buy your mug too, because it looks super cool and would look amazing with them, right? And that's as simple as it is. You completely ignore the fact that, you know, these guys, they, they complete, you completely ignore uh, the fact that they already have a product, right? You just advertise this product to them because as, as an extra and do a really good job selling it, 
okay so that if you were selling an extra you just need to do a really good job selling it you know because it's a second product so you just got to go a bit more aggressive and you know get better motivators in place and stuff kind of similar to how you do the advertising for target audience three okay so basic stats of this audience number one the desire is low really low because uh, the people, the person taking supplements, you know, he he already has something. He's not looking for something new. There's no reason for him to buy your stuff. You know, so the desire, the desire is low, obviously. Competition. The competition is medium. Okay, it's not high, but the great, the worst thing is you're competing with the product that he's already taken. That's the worst thing. Okay, the reach medium uh, difficulty it's not it's not that it not it's not as hard as the audience one you know but it's definitely a bit harder compared to audience three and audience four scale medium like the pro the problem with audience one and audience two is that these these both make up for a very small percentage combined of the complete target audience of the, of the complete audience sorry not the target audience but of the complete uh, market i would say that both of these combined like audience one and audience two make up for about five or six percent of the entire market the other two audiences are what make up for the rest you know which is one of the reasons why scale with this is harder it's harder to scale your campaigns. It's harder to reach more people. So if you have a campaign that's working really well, if you have a marketing campaign, if you have a marketing uh, strategy that's working really well, it's still going to be hard to take that to a seven-figure level because the audience is just capped, right? It's small. So now let's take a look at the sales process for audience three. People, so the audience three consists of people that are in the niche but aren't actively looking to buy anything or more specifically your product. Again, let's, do the, let's take the supplement example, right? So in this case, when it comes to audience three, they are aware of the benefits of being healthy. Okay, they wanna get healthier. The problem is they do not know that supplements can make them healthy. Okay, you see how different it is now? They do not know that the supplements can make them healthy. And number three, they, they do not use any supplements currently and they do not have any intention to because they don't even know what the benefit of a supplement is. And they're not convinced that it's gonna make them healthy, right? In order to sell to this audience, you need to convince them that they can get healthier and hit their goals easier with supplements. And position your product as somewhat of a key to achieve their goal. So it's basically like saying, okay, you know, do you wanna get healthier? and fitter and hit your goals faster and they're like yeah then you're like okay here's the secret key you know it's a supplement how do you do that make a list of all the reasons and their motivations behind wanting to get healthy why do they want to get healthy do they want to look better you know do they want to attract the attention of the opposite sex now i'm going to get to the life force here in a few seconds so that we're going to break this down a little bit more what are their primary motivators what are they currently doing to achieve the result that they hate? This is where marketing really comes into play. Okay, now, these questions I just gave you are a part of what I refer to as a deep dive method. Where you ask yourself these questions and really go deep in and understand the, the market you're going after. The audience that you're going after. You know, and in the next... In the next few modules, I'm going to show you guys um, how to how to properly use the deep dive method and to, to get results. Okay. Now your task is to link their goals to your product and convincing them that your product with with your product they'll be able to hit their goals easier without doing stuff that they hate. Okay. So a cool example on how to do this is let's say these guys hate eating broccoli. Like, let's say this is a guy that completely hates eating broccoli. He despises it, right? And you sell a supplement that has the same nutrient value as that of eating broccoli. You can effortlessly sell this person, guys. You know, one thing you gotta understand though, and one thing you gotta remember, is that you gotta stay compliant with the laws of your country. You know, that's not something that 
uh, I can be responsible for, you know, but like, if you're selling a supplement, okay, back to the point, by the way, I moved off the compliance thing. So if you're selling supplements, right, that have the same nutrient value as that of eating broccoli, your ad could be something as simple as sick of eating broccoli to get healthy, eat this instead. You know, now everyone that's reading the ad is like, yes, I'm sick of eating broccoli. Yes, I want to get healthier. Oh, the supplement's going to help me do it. Cool. Let me go get it. Okay, of course, this ad is very direct and might get you banned, but you can do less aggressive variations of the ad, which I'm going to show you guys in the next few modules. So now one of our best ads, okay, says this 100% natural X powder is packed with 75, nutri 75 plus nutrients. That's an ad that we ran. You know, so when, when people look at that ad, right, they're like, okay, dang, like, 75 plus nutrients, I hate eating broccoli. So this is probably going to replace the broccoli nutrient too. That's what's probably going through their head. You know, and, they, and then they buy, uh, they go and purchase a supplement. The advantage with this audience is the competition is slightly lower. Since most of the, mar most of the marketers are busy trying to get to audience one and audience two. You know, so the competition is comparatively lower. The segment also allows you to scale your ads way harder because it's broad. There's a lot of people that want to be healthy. You know, there's a lot of people that want to be healthy. So you open the loop on the problem, right? Which is you guys hate broccoli. This, this solution um, allows you to not eat broccoli. I mean, you, you open them up to the idea. Right, you introduce, you introduce the idea to them of the supplements. So now they assume that your thing is the best, okay? Because they're like, okay, well, you know, he gave me the idea. I think his supplement is the best. I think his supplement is the only thing that can do it, okay? And, that's it. and then they're just going to buy it. It's called emotional selling, okay, which we'll cover in the next few modules. The audience is broader too, so you're going to be spending less dollars on ads to reach them. It's, it's easier to reach. Okay, so the downsides to this audience are number one, it takes skill to market to this audience since the desire is low. You have to sort of create that desire. Okay, and then you have to, it's not even like you have to create the desire, you have to start linking their goals to your desires, right? So you have to, like, you, like you're not going to be manufacturing it necessarily, but you're going to be taking what their desires are and you're going to be leveraging them to sell your products. Okay. Slower results than one and two because the buying process is slower. You got to convince this guy to get, to start using supplements, you know, so the process is going to be slightly slower. So your results are going to be slower. You got to walk them through the whole indoctrination sequence of cold audience goes to warm and goes to hot and goes to super hot and, you know. Number three, you need a stronger product and a deep, a very deep understanding of the market. Okay, so you need to have a deep understanding of the market and know what uh, and know what their desires are, what their problems are, and what what the solutions are, and uh, more importantly, what they don't want to do. Because this this like marketing and this audience is all about how to do X without Y, and that's it. You know. So let's go to the Viking example. What do we know about the audience here? Number one, they watch the Game of Thrones stuff, right? Number two. They don't, they don't know that they could or they should buy a gift that's related to that niche, right? And they do not have anything right now. So these are the three things we know about this audience, right? Now, how do we sell this mug to this audience? Simple. Well, not so simple, honestly. In this case, your marketing is going to be geared toward their core desires. Okay, so before we get to this part, Let's take a look at the Life Force 8 as mentioned in one of the best marketing or copywriting books of all time called Cashvertising. Here's the Life Force 8. Survival. So basically, so what the Life Force 8 essentially is, is the eight core motivators behind every human being's actions, right? So if a person wakes up and goes to work, okay, he's doing it to fulfill a huge motivation, which in this case is life source, life source seven, because he, he's going to work so he can make money so that he can take care of his family, life force one, so he can like, he's going to a job and making money so he can survive and he can enjoy life. 
Life Force 2, Life Force 3, bunch of stuff, right? Basically, every action, every purchase, everything that a person does, he makes every lifestyle change that a person has, he has that because he's fulfilling a primary motivator of the Life Force 8. Okay, and it's basically like these eight major motivators which drive human beings. So let's get into it. Life force, num life force number one, survival, enjoyment of life, and life extension. People would do anything to survive, right? Like, this, like survival is key. The survival is something that our ancestors have fought for. And they were in the zoo. Survival was the biggest motivation behind fire. Think of that, you know? The life force eight are what shaped human beings. That's what motivated humans. That's what pushed human people, uh, human beings to evolve, you know? And now we are leveraging these strong forces of motivation to generate results for yourself. Sounds pretty, uh, sounds pretty um, savage, I know, but it's, it's marketing, you know? Life Force One, survival, enjoyment of life, and life extension. People who do anything to enjoy life, life extension. So, there are situations, however, where one life force is more dominant than the other one. Okay, so, for example, like people who smoke, right? They obviously know that they're killing themselves when they smoke, right? They're, they're, they're not extending their life period, but... They do it because of life force too, which is enjoyment of food and beverages. Okay, so their dominant life force is enjoyment of food, not life extension. So that's the difference. That's something that you need to understand that everyone has their own dominant life forces. Okay, and a, uh, and a bit more submissive ones, but they're still governed by pretty much the same laws, right? So the second is enjoyment of food and beverages. I just gave you an example of that. Number three is freedom from fear, pain, and danger. So, like, people just want to be safe, guys. You know, they like they want to eat what they want to eat. They want to drink something sweet or whatever they want to drink. And they want to live a safe life, right? They want to live a safe life free from uh, fearful and painful situations. And they would do anything to not be in, the, in, be in those situations, right? Sexual companionship. That's a huge motivation for people, obviously. Uh, number Number five. Comfortable living conditions. People want to live comfortably. They want to live in a safe uh, environment. You know, they want to be. They want to live um, in a nice place. And they want to have a pool. They want to have a comfortable living. Number six: to be superior, winning, keeping up with the Joneses. Joneses. They want to win, right? And that's a huge life force. People want to be more superior than the person rest next to them. So if you can gear your marketing towards like, and I'm going to show you guys how to do that here towards how they're going to be superior if they buy your product, you know, then, then you're really going to be hitting a button there, okay? So these Life Force 8 are essentially buttons that you can press on to get people to buy stuff from you, okay? As evil as that sounds. By the way, don't use this information to sell anything unethical or illegal. It's not worth it. You'll, you'll be in jail. You don't need to do that, okay? So use this ethically, sell people what um, you think is going to really help them and yeah, make a lot of money doing so, okay? Make a lot of money being ethical because you can do it. You don't need to be shady to make a lot of money. Anyway, care and protection of loved ones. So that's obviously um, a huge deal, right? Men do a lot of things to keep their kids safe and they want to protect their kids and uh, they want to protect their families. Um, their their wife and you know even their parents to us uh, uh, sometimes so yeah another thing is social approval so people do a lot of things for social approval they'll buy stuff they don't have to buy just for social approval you know that's how we explain everything that a human being does by the way like if a person has no money in the bank account and he goes and buys a Lambo that's life for six right there to be superior winning keeping up with the rich dudes, you know? If a person, like if, if he's in a community with, where everyone else has a car, the guy's gonna try to find money to buy a car. He will buy a car regardless of how bad the situation's, situation is because he needs the social approval, you know? So these are buttons that every human being has that you can press on to sell stuff. Now, ask yourself, 
how does this product satisfy the life force eight and how can I market it as such? Now, in the future modules, I'll walk you through something called as a deep dive method, which will help you craft excellent marketing messages to advertise to this audience, right? But for example purposes, the greatest life sources that you can attack here are LF8 and LF6. Now, let me explain. If you're selling the mug, right? The LF8 is need for social approval. So you're basically saying, okay, well, if you're a Game of Thrones fan, you know, and you have this mug, everyone else knows that you're a Game of Thrones fan too, right? So you're, you're getting approved by society just because you're a Game of Thrones fan and because you're, because you're showing it. LF6, the need to be superior. Now, since you have a mug, you can like run a testimonial video, for example, that says, oh, I bought this mug and, you know, I, ho like, I hosted a party at my place. All the girls were asking me about this mug. I was just like the famous guy. Everyone, would lo everyone wanted to touch it and play with it and that kind of stuff. That just communicates that the other person is going to feel superior in possession of the mug. Okay. Next. You can advertise, so I already told you this, right? So you can praise, basically advertise it like, like, do you like Game of Thrones and buy the school mug and watch how all your friends ask you about it. Great, great angle, right? The good part about a product like this is there is no real need for a strong marketing message either. The product pretty much sells itself because it's such a viral product. Now, here's a few basic stats of this audience. The desire is low. Because obviously they don't even know, like there's no need for it either. So you got to create somewhat, somewhat uh, start linking desires to create a desire there, right? Competition is low because everyone else is busy trying to sell audience A and audience B guys, you know, because uh, they don't have, like they don't have the skills or the budgets to play around with audience three. Matter of fact, audience three actually requires a slightly smaller budget, I would say, compared to the other guys because... It's much easier to do. It just requires a lot more uh, marketing experience. Uh, con uh, the reach, the reach is pretty easy. You can reach these guys easily. You know, you could go to Facebook, run an ad with an interest of health and you'll reach these guys. You know, like these guys will see your ads. Scale. It's high because um, this one and the next audience are the primary dominators when it comes to uh, the market segments, right? So like a lot of people, I'd say you go out on the street and ask 100 people if they watch Game of Thrones, at least 40 people watch Game of Thrones. You know, you go to, you, you go down the street and ask like 100 people if they want to be healthier, 60 people or at least 70 people want to be healthier. You know, they're paying attention to it, right? So now let's take a look at the sales process of target audience number four. Okay, because now you guys know the, the life force eight too. So this is going to be much easier for me to walk you guys through. So target audience four is, are basically people that have no interest in the niche. Okay, they have no interest in the niche nor product. Example one, supplements again. This audience consists of people that are so busy living life. They don't even care about being healthy. They literally don't. You know, so number one, they don't they 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 don't even know what the benefits of being healthy are. Okay, number two, they are unaware of the benefits of using supplements to get healthier. Number three, they do not use supplements. In order to sell to this audience, you need to first convince them to get to start paying attention to getting healthier. Okay, that's the first sale you need to make. The second sale you need to make is to convince them that they can actually do it. Okay, and the third sale you got to make is that they can do it easier with your supplements. How do you do that? The Life Force 8 is the lighthouse for us. Okay, that is the light in, in, in darkness. The Life Force 8 describes all the desires that people have regardless of who they are, right? So now all you have to do is sync the desire you want them to have, which is to get healthy, with a part of the Life Force 8, right? So for example, if you sell weight loss supplements, your goal is to sell them on the idea that late, losing weight is going to make them more attractive to their wife or to other people from the opposite sex, you know, which is life force for sexual companionship, right? And then tell them that they can do it with the help of your supplement. That's really it.
This is where the best marketers survive, and this is the answer to huge scale. If you want to build a six or a seven, eight, or even nine figure business, this is the way to do it. Okay. Your competition here would be other huge brands. But since the audience is so big and so massive, there's literally no saturation and never will be. If you know, if you know how to market to this audience, guys, you're pretty much set for life. Like, like it's such an evergreen thing, you know? And like once, once you, once you learn how to do it, you'll be able to sell anything. In the launch section, we're going to be showing you guys like uh, different niches that you can use this information in. So you could like use the, like we're going to show you what target audience to go after in this niche and that niche and whatever. So it's going to get really interesting hereafter. So this is going to be fun guys, right? Um, so the advantages of audience four are low ad spends to acquire customers. The reach is so easy, guys. You know, honestly, it's so easy to reach these people on Facebook. It's crazy. Number two, massive scale and easy reach, right? Number three, no saturation. There's so many people in the market, you will never get saturated. Because in this in audience for you're targeting the whole world, you know? And there's seven or eight billion people on the uh, on earth. I'd say about 5 billion of them have face, uh, have internet. 2.7 billion have Facebook. Right? Now, there are a few disadvantages to this. Okay? Disadvantage number one. Slower results. So, the buying process is obviously going to be a bit slower. Okay? Because, like, you got, there's a lot of convincing to do and number two is that it requires a certain amount of expertise to start linking syncing audiences and you know really effectively um, crafting campaigns that sell like if you look at some of the richest people in the world right like richest people like you know selling stuff to mass audiences like they're really selling something to everyone you know they just know how to market well now we'll get to what you can choose and what you should start with and what you shouldn't start with here in a second. Okay, but um, so sales process for the Viking map, for example, is these are guys that don't watch Game of Thrones, possibly, possibly heard of it. We don't know yet. If I were to sell this audience, I'd advertise this product as, does your girlfriend love Game of Thrones? Gift her this. Boom. You know, because these days Game of Thrones is everywhere. It's a huge audience. All right. Or I wouldn't even talk about Game of Thrones, honestly. And hook the product to the Life Force 8 and talk about how they look cooler with the skull mask or a skull mug or anything. You know, I bought this and all my friends wanted to, you know, you're hosting parties and I have this, have this product. Anything like that. Now, here's a few basic stats of this audience. Desire, super low. Competition, super low. Reach, super easy. Scale, super high. Kind of the extremes. Um, of all four, you know, so yeah. Now the game plan. If if you just got started and you don't have a lot of experience in the e-commerce business, stick with audience two and three. It's much easier to sell to people that are already buying similar products to yours, or are or are in the niche and are not intending to buy a product, right? But they're still in the niche, so it's going to be easier to sell to them. Four is really advanced, guys. Honestly. I'm not even going to cover uh, the whole audience four concept on this course because it's, it's, it's a bit deeper, right? Uh, it's really advanced and you have to get some experience before you jump on that. And number one is actually very hard to profit from. I mean, you might get a few sales, but it's very hard to profit from because you're spending a lot of money to reach these customers, right? So my suggestion to you is start off with two, get some sales flowing if you're in a specialized niche, okay? So for example, like we had a client selling brake calipers, you know, so that's a specialized niche. If you're selling brake calipers, might as well sell it to people that know about brake calipers and are either looking for it, which is one, or people that already use brake calipers. You know, get them to replace it much easier. But if you're selling something that's broad, like the mug, go straight for three. You know, don't, don't, don't mess around with one or two, go straight for three. You can easily hit six figures with two and uh, quite quite fairly hit seven figures with three pretty easily. Um, so that's the game plan, guys.
So that's the game plan, guys. I hope you enjoyed this module. Uh, I'll see you in the next one. All right.